we're live. It's happening. Good afternoon, people. It's Wednesday. It's September 2, 2. And uh, yeah, we're here today. I'm going to play some songs. I'm going to play two things. And then a very special guest is joining me, the incredible artist illustrator, Sydney Smith. Um, thank you for being here. I'm going to start with a new thing because uh, in this more recent batch of shows I've been trying to make sure that I play something new every week so I'm gonna stick to that promise um this is called January 8th right now if you've got a better name for it let me know January 8th on September 22nd uh somebody pointed out yes uh autumnal equinox equi meaning equal nox meaning night um because it's that time it's that time of uh summer moving into autumn moving into winter and the night's drawing in uh I've got a song about that a little bit later so watch the space I'm gonna play though before we bring in Sydney Smith, um, a track from a live recording we did a few years back um, called Tendrils. And I'm going to play it because Sydney did the artwork for it. It's this, well, we'll get him to talk about it very soon when he comes on. But uh, it's this uh, pretty cool image that he's going to tell you about that technique, but it's basically like a, a really basic kind of photograph, believe it or not. But yeah, we'll come to that. 
Gonna play the song. This is tendrils about things just beneath the surface. from the first record and from a special live recording. If you like what you're hearing, and also if you like Sydney Smith, um, then please feel free to share this video, um, spread it around the world. Because yeah, we got some, we got some Buffalo, we got some Mainz, we got some Vancouver, we got some, some Taipei, um, folks tuning in from all over. Um, but yeah, perhaps without further ado, I should invite my special guest on, um, a lovely fella by the name of Sydney Smith. Sydney, how's it going? Hello, Tim. Hello. <laughs> hearing me loud oh, and clear. I'm hearing you very loud and very clear. Um, Great. Yeah. This is such a treat to have you on. Thank you for having me. It's... I have my cup of coffee here. Very good. Um, and... Uh, I'm here in my studio in Halifax. Yeah, um, a place very, very dear to my heart. Um, That's right. Yeah, how's it going over there? Uh, well, uh, my world is, is pretty small, so I have kids, young kids right now. Mm -hmm. I don't leave the studio uh, and the house, the, the compound, mm -hmm. very much, unless it's to drop kids off at school or pick them up. Uh, but this, the city here in Halifax, it's a beautiful day. Um, I'm not really sure about, you know, COVID status right now, but, right. uh, we've, we've had a, a, a pretty good considering we've had a good, um, kind of history with it so far. It hasn't been, it hasn't been 
as tragic as some of the other places. Yeah, yeah. But partly because we're so far in the east, you yeah. know, it's uh, we don't have a lot of people just passing through. You're quite uh, quite isolated out on the out on the yeah, coast. in many ways, in many ways. Yeah. Well, but yes, that's true. You are very much connected to this place. Yeah. And um, did we work at at the same place for a while? Do you mean Steve Arenos? Steve Arenos? I never yeah. went to Steve Arenos. I mean, that's a good a assumption. There's a lot of people for a significant period of time that all went through this wonderful establishment, this wonderful coffee shop. I used to come and visit yeah. you at the little, there was a little shed in the parking lot of a big hardware store. It was just like just a tiny little shed and you would work there on Sundays and I'd just come and stand at the window and maybe get a free coffee, but maybe not. I don't remember. Oh, I, I'm, I'm well, unfortunately, Steve has passed since then, and uh, we can definitely say you get a free coffee every time. <laughs> uh, but he knew. I mean, he knew. He he was he was such an easygoing guy, a great yeah. a great person, uh, and the last boss I think I've ever had. Wow. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, so many great people have have gone through that establishment, and I met Maggie there, mm -hmm. and she's my wife, mm -hmm. and. Uh, now we're married, have two two kids and a wonderful car. So, <laughs> <laughs> two kids and a wonderful car, not two wonderful kids and a car. Oh, I <laughs> let's just let's not mince words here. <laughs> um, so we didn't. I remember exactly where we met because it, it left an image in an, an image an imprint, but an image. I mean, it's you. It's all visual. It's all yeah. uh, you know. You're an artist, of course. It leaves an image. Uh, it was. I went to see a movie at the art gallery at Dal. I think it was like a, a Werner Herzog movie or something like maybe the one about like getting the boat up over the mountain. And you were Facts there. Five. Yes. Because the guy, the guy who presented it would say the same spiel every night that he was airing. Because during the film festival and they were doing docs, docs every night okay. and that one was um yes you're right and i mistook you for someone else yes exactly and i was like oh this this person's being really friendly and it's so nice i love it here in halifax <laughs> like it was, it was not that long after i'd moved to the country and i was like yeah how oh, canadians are so friendly but then you just like i think you realized like halfway through like oh you're not the person i think you are well it turns out you were better than the person i thought you were yes. the guy ended up being a jerk but uh <laughs> i had i and 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 Actually, that guy I mistook for someone else. So it's three degrees. <laughs> He's not even the original. Not even the original. He's not even mistaker. the original. I always called him James, uh, but his name was never James. And I think I called you James that night too. So it was all very complicated. But it brought us here, and this is brought how us we're together. here today. Brought us together. And around about that time, like I guess at that point you were you were in art school, and I I, I don't know if you'd you'd started at that point at uh, kind of doing posters and and album artwork and things like that for people but it was like it was only shortly after that that we we started working together because i'd seen your work i guess for like don brown rig and maybe hey rosetta and some other some other artists around halifax and just i mean you were a friend at that point and i loved your artwork so it was like a real treat to get to work with you and i think we did like a couple of posters and then you did the the album which i have here which uh it's on it's like there's a poster on the wall so people can see it quite regularly but it's like it's just like the most beautiful thing. Um, and maybe you could even talk a little bit about the construction of this, this thingy right here. Well, um, I've never, I've never done anything like that. Sort of, a, um, I mean, I, I okay. So I went to, I went to NASCAD university here in Halifax and I had mostly, um, focused on drawing, printmaking, two dimensional art. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of sculpture. There's a little bit of sound art, a little bit of video. It was a very all over the place kind of thing, but I've mostly and since then am, uh, done two dimensional um, work mm -hmm. and mostly traditional kind of art work, drawing and painting. But I've always loved the opportunity to try something new and working with musicians is the perfect opportunity because musicians are so easygoing. And most of the time, they can't afford you anyway, so they say, whatever you want to do, please. <laughs> so, Very true. So um, I've always taken the opportunity to work with musicians uh, as an opportunity to try something new, so to, to, to try something exciting. And I think at up, till this, up to today, 
um, it's I'm just been kind of addicted to that that rush of trying something new and and finding a way to uh, express myself uh, or discover the the um, you know the special way that one medium works over another. So working with you on this project, I was like, okay, let's make this 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 do something I've never done before, which was to kind of create this um, three dimensional art piece that was based on a sort of romantic almost uh, ornament ornamentation mm-hmm. so uh you know you have the 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 fluttering banner and the and all of the different elements of nature but to make it really make it real and to make it not so um at, not so romantic can be I mean, really kind of gritty and mm-hmm. and so it's beautiful, but also very real, and it's grounded in such uh, a, pr- a practical and and uh, sort of um, honest. There's, I felt there was a little bit of honesty there, mm. which kind of I how is how I really f- saw your music. So it was an interpretation of your music, a hundred percent, but it was also a chance to try something new. A lot of the things were found. The wings, unfortunately, were f- mm. found at an art store. I mean. <gasps> they're duck wings, I think. I, I didn't find the I didn't find the duck, but the, okay. the 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 cat skulls. I still have I still have them around here. Yeah, then, that's one of the cat skulls. Oh my god! Since then, I've collected more skulls. More. That's a little fox, but um, yeah, it's uh, it was it was really exciting. And because I was, I think at that point already really going towards children's books mm-hmm. and making picture books. Uh, it was a nice opportunity to to work on something a little bit more um, grittier. Yeah, well, it's. I, I mean, mean, I could put I could put skulls in children's books, but yeah. there'd be a bit of a pushback. <laughs> well, whatever kind of led to it, I'm so happy because it's really just like the most beautiful thing ever, and well, I'm so proud. Like it's. I mean, so many times, like people would, you know, like it's it's become a bit of an albatross because I would play shows, and I'll have like all of my records available. And that's the first one. And like, you know, you're always kind of like, you're always like working on new things and really excited about what the new thing is. And people would always want to buy that one because it's like, I love that artwork so much. And I'm like, no, buy the new one, buy the new one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I remember working on it and thinking this could either go really well or really poorly, which is usually a good sign. Yeah. You know, if you're working on something and you have no idea if it's, if it's good or bad, um, Chances are, it's really good. It didn't go it's meh really good. at the end. Meh. What's that? It didn't, it, yeah, it didn't yeah, go meh. Really good or really bad. <laughs> that's the worst. And you can usually predict when that's going to happen. You can never... It's never a good sign if you think, I wonder if people are going to go meh. <laughs> so maybe we could just like briefly talk about this one as well, because this was this followed shortly in the wake. Um, yeah. This is Tendrils, the track that I just played, a live version of it. Um, and you can sort of like... You can see this, the themes connected to the other one with the feather... And uh, what is the plant there? Do you know what that the plant was? That Heather, used? I, I Heather. think. Ah. A feather and Heather. A feather and Heather. Together. <laughs> Tethered. <laughs> um, yes. But yeah, that was a kind of a photograph thing, right? That you, you did, essentially. Right, yeah. So that's the stuff that you can find sometimes at uh, Nature... I think here you can find it at the Natural History mm-hmm. Museum in the, in the gift shop. It's a cyanotype, which is the earliest... The earliest form of photography discovered by um, some scientists in like 1842 or something, and um, uh, yeah, it's the it's the the very beginning, the basic uh, element of photography, which uh, which is ties to the medium which I used before, and also the themes are also tying to that, so it's all qu- quite connected. Um, those two pieces, and it's just basically like a kind of paper that, when exposed to light, that's changes right. color. Like that's the the tech. That's right. Technology. Yeah. So it's there's chemicals, some sort of ammonia, citrate, potassium sort of mix, and um, you know you take it out of the special envelope that's sealed from the light, and then you place it out. It's really fun. I love doing it with. Uh, with anything and I've been working with it a little bit lately because mm. I love the idea of it representing a memory mm. because it's a, it's a it's sort of a, a mark that's made and 
Um, I mean, photography is, 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 is that, but it's a little bit more complicated because it, it, it's more about the illusion of, 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 crea- of, of capturing a moment. But this is a little bit more of like a trace, mm. uh, a proof of something that had happened at one point. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. It's, it, it's, beautiful. it's sort of boiled down a little bit. Yeah. So, so it lends I... itself better to memory, I think. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> you so you you kind of mentioned a few times like you know like you haven't been doing as much of the well hardly any I guess kind of work for for musicians and stuff in the last little bit because the, the illustration just like took off like mm-hmm. crazy. I mean I say took off that makes it sound like it had some kind of like independent independence from you working your arse off um, and mm-hmm. oh, right and you have just like made some beautiful things. So maybe you can just show us a little bit some of your. Uh, some of the books that you've, heard, you've worked on? Yes. Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I, sh- I shouldn't remove myself from from that equation of, of it taking off. But it does sometimes feel like it's outside of your control. And I had been working uh, quite a bit uh, without much, you know, I hadn't... I ha- it, things hadn't been happening for me quite too quickly until I moved to uh, Toronto and, and met up with uh, uh, Groundwood Books, which is a publisher there, mm-hmm. and Sheila Berry, who was the editor and ended up being my my um, my mentor, so mm-hmm. to speak. I mean, as I can't really... My, a, a good friend and mentor, and she sort of guided me. She was my guide through the beginnings of that. And so um, the first book that we worked on together was this book here, Sidewalk Flowers. Um, I had uh, this, she had emailed me about working on this as we were getting ready to move to Toronto. So I hadn't even, I didn't even have a plan what to do when I got to Toronto. I just knew that uh, um, I I wanted to, you know, contact some publishers. Um, And then while I was in Toronto, years later, I worked on this book, Towns by the Sea. And these are both Governor General's Award winners. It doesn't, it's not a, not a big deal, but um, <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and it's, it's always an, uh, it's a huge honor. But um, uh, Towns by the Sea was really uh, important to me at the time because I had been away from Nova Scotia mm-hmm. for um, about five years at that point Mm -hmm. and felt really disconnected from my home and this is set in nova scotia in glace bay which is a town in cape breton and it's about a a a boy whose father works in the mines and it's uh it i will always uh have a special part in my uh a special place in my heart and i think this this is the one that like it really kind of like struck me because i've like kept an eye on all this stuff um over the years but in that one particularly, like the light that you managed to kind of express mm. there, just like it blows my it blows my mind. I don't understand how it's actually possible to kind of like create this sense of of light with that. And and what are you working with there? Watercolors? Like I'm so yeah. like, not up on my. So this uh, is the this is the spread that a lot of people go back to, mm-hmm. which is, um, I mean, does Zoom probably doesn't do it justice, but probably not. <laughs> go and um, buy it, people. It's at all of the bookshops, Towns by the Sea. Just go buy it. Um, but yeah, yeah. So light had been had started at this point to be really important to mm-hmm. the storytelling process for me because it was. Um, uh, I don't know. It's sort of I, I, as far as I can tell, it really adds to this 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 sense of place, this feeling mm-hmm. of of place, and um, it's a universal thing as well. Everyone can recognize that no matter where you are. And, and this is a remote town in, in, in Canada, in Nova Scotia, that barely, I'm sure not many people who have read it have visited or yeah. had even heard of it. But through certain elements like light, you can connect, it connects the reader in a way that um, speaks to you sort of viscerally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is the Walker version, which is a the U, UK. Okay. The UK. In Canada, we had a separate. We Ooh, because there was a like a cover uh, over the top of it. 
Yeah. So there's like so daytime there's, there's and nighttime. Daytime. Oh my god, that's amazing. There was the daytime and the nighttime. And I I think that was my that's favorite. That's special. One of my favorite extra touches. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that's just, that says a lot about Groundwood Books as well because they, um, they just love making beautiful books. Walker mm. does too, but it's mm. just not part of what... Uh, publishers in the UK don't usually have dust jackets, okay. which is okay because... They kind of annoy me sometimes. <laughs> ripped. Yeah, kids I guess if you got like a kid reading ripped. through this as well, it's maybe just like. Yeah. I know. usually sometimes I take them off sometimes. <laughs> anyway. Oh, uh, before we get to this one, yeah. this is the one that came after Town is by the Sea, pretty much. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe there was one in between, but uh, Small in the City is important to me because I, I wrote this. And mm -hmm. this is um, a little bit like how um, Sidewalk Flowers was the book that I. I illustrated with uh, uh, John Arno Lawson. Mm -hmm. He he wrote the concept for it. This is a wordless book, but uh, this is my farewell letter to Toronto. Yeah. In a, in a sense, because um, both of them are set in Toronto. Both of them are about being in the city, uh, but they're a different kind of tone. Mm -hmm. So this one is a little bit more um, has a, a little bit more of a subtext and um, a little bit more complicated, less. Less hopeful, but there's hope. They're both mm. about hope, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Um, um, and then just to just to just to finish that off, mm. I talk like rivers. The one that I just did again with a lot to do the with light. light. Oh I God. even I even went a little bit further with uh, that sort of. This is something nice. I uh, I was able to do with this book. I had never done this before. This is a gatefold. Yeah. And this is a double gatefold. <gasps> That. Oh my God. That. It's just. Uh, I I. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a. So beautiful. I can it's say one of my favorite. It's so beautiful. It's one of my favorites. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It's yeah. a beautiful moment in a book written by Jordan Scott, who's a West Coast poet. Um. And uh, it's just, it's, it's so lovely to work with people that al allow you to take it, the medium a little bit further and further each time. Mm -hmm. it's always, uh, mm -hmm. Again, like working with musicians, you, know, you try to push yourself and try thing, new things. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't, we, why don't we try that? Should we try that? Do you want to do like a little, uh, I mean, I'm not going to pretend like we're just like coming up with this idea on this book because we did talk about this in advance. But yeah, let's do a little... Uh, a little demonstration maybe maybe create something on the fly i'm gonna play some music and you can uh -huh. okay you can what you what, can... what are you talking about I'm, <laughs> I'm not prepared for this well maybe if you can like really really there. really quickly set up a camera above your workstation just oh just out of out of the blue oh just... look well, oh. would you look at <laughs> would you look at that oh this is a paper that i had prepared not for any any reason <laughs> Um, but I won't talk too much. I won't talk at all if, if you if you promise to play music. I'd love I that. I promise. And I think yeah, if people have uh, if people have questions for Sydney, anything about his process, anything about his work, um, fire them in the chat. And what's your uh, what's your favorite key, Sydney? Uh, B minor, I suppose. <laughs> okay, B minor. Do you ha do you, can I ask you a question real quick? Yes. When you pick up a guitar, what's the first chord that you play? Oh, I have to like pretend now that I hadn't. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> things are getting exciting here. I play mm. that too. Yeah. I probably play a G, frankly. Oh, what does that say about you? G, I don't know. Yeah. That's that was quite good, right? Was that good? It is good. I think G is a great <laughs> chord. Um, very... Though often I have my capo on the. Uh, on the fourth fret, which turns it into a B. Mm. Major though, not minor. I think you're uh, you're upside down now, Sid. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But anyway, you wanted B minor, so you're getting some B minor. I love a B minor.
see some trees. I can't believe it took this long for a Bob Ross image to appear. <laughs> I know. I don't normally do this. It's just, it's just... I'm gonna show the world you while you're working because we can see you in that other little camera. Stefan Schneider says this is amazing. They're hand in hand, it's so true. Oh, what's going on at the bottom there? Is that more paint? What, did I just put on? Yeah. This is something that... It's a special kind of material. Material by material, oh. I mean liquid. <laughs> well, it's a liquid that kind of um, it aids in the granulation process. That's called a granulation medium. Mm -hmm. It kind of does some really funky things here. It's doing it already. Let's see. Kind of this sort of. They're hand effect. in hand. It's so true. Oh, well, what's going on at the bottom there? I accidentally oh. recorded myself talking <laughs> okay, to you. Okay, I thought that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it as a as a sample. Stephen Chesser is saying this reminds him of music inspired by the Group of Seven by the Rio Statics, oh. but in oh, reverse I'm, or simultaneously. I, That's so my appropriate. Favorite. My favorite album in high school is that. But we're doing it live. There's that moment where he talks about painting snow and that realization that snow is not white. Whoa. Wait a second, snow isn't white. Well, when you're painting it, it's not. <laughs> Mostly, it's, usually it's blue. That's trippy. For those non-Canadians out there, the Rio Statics are a Canadian band and the Group of Seven were a group of kind of like nature painters, would that be a fair thing in like early early 20th century? I'm not even totally sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, landscape. Landscape, that's the word. Yeah. Um, uh, 
Henry and How about Lily? Lily, what's her name? It's the name of my new niece. Oh, oh, it's like five days old. I want to see something else that's kind of fun. Do we have time? Oh, yes. Okay, watch this. Let's see if this works. What is this? This is something called gum egg. That's in food. Um, is it? Uh, I, th- I feel like it's in like coke it, or something. It's also, also used as like a blocking medium. So if you want to put it on top of on top of something, you can um, and then let it dry. It acts as a as a way of like a frisket. Uh, uh, I can't think of another name for it. So you're just dropping little bits of ink on there? Yeah, I mean, it's just little ink. Like distant forest. do you pick up when you first what chord do you play when you first pick up a guitar those are how that's the order of the words that's right it's b minor i always pick up i pick up and play it it's so sad it is really sad words people enjoying this I have to agree it's very beautiful and would you say this is kind of part of your daily practice I see on Instagram you post you post a lot of pictures many days of of like new 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 things every day do you kind of have a a ritual that you stick to in terms of your creation Um, try to I, I, I try to do a little bit of this every day which is just playing around and having fun. Um, if it's playing around with mediums like this, where you kind of just see what happens. Yeah. Like, look at that. That's just gorgeous right in here. That little branch that just kind of forms. Oh, completely unintentional. Just, just yeah. came from there. Gum arabica, and then uh, some ink over the top. Yeah, it's acrylic ink that kind of has that. I think anything really, uh, but uh, acrylic ink really gets chunky when it meets gum arabic. Uh, it takes a long time to dry, though. That's the only other thing. So we're gonna be waiting for overnight for that. Like the birds will be waking up by the time it's dried.
That to me is definitely a sunset rather than a sunrise. Yeah, Would it's you agree? funny how um, the light is different. You can look at an image and say that's a sunset, not a sunrise. When really it should be, it should be kind of similar, shouldn't it? Oh, I don't know. Is is there? Do you know anything about that? About the actual science of it? If it is different, because I agree with you, but. That's all we need. I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. We'll just we'll say it's it's true. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. Sunset seems brighter. Yeah. Everything is. Or sorry, sunrise seems brighter. Sunrise seems brighter. But maybe that's just because you're fresh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this could be like the very, very, very first moments of a sunrise, perhaps. And if anybody has questions for Sydney about his technique or about any of his work, please uh, feel comfortable to pop it in the chat. It's what we're here for. You're going on a tour in November, right? Not, uh, well, it's not really a tour, it's just a, uh, I'm visiting, I'm visiting uh, the UK, I'm going to Exeter. Exeter. To do, uh, uh, is that the right way? To, is that how you say I think so. It? I've never been. But yeah, you can say, there's a lot of English place names that you can say wrong. You've said this wrong. <laughs> um, but uh, is this a public event or would people be able to go if somebody was watching in Exeter or close by? Would they be able to go to this event? I think it's a it's it's a school organized event. So schools. So if you're at that school, oh, it. okay. It's the children's children's book show. Children's book show in Exeter in November. Is there a specific date? The ninth is when I'm performing, so I'll we'll <laughs> read and do some flips and things, and then. Um, and then there's workshops, which, which um, schools also register for. Register. I can get this without the shimmer. I can't. While I was in, um, while we were in lockdown, the first wave, we were. Privileged to be able to leave the city before everything was in serious lockdown and go to a farm outside of the city, a hundred acres. And there's always this mist in the morning. Oh, I guess maybe the maybe the image is now changing to be a sunrise rather than a sunset. Then I don't know. I think it's still a sunset because I'm trying to kind of suggest a bit of a mist in the background.
Hilary says that the kids and her are loving it. Oh, great. What's that you're using there? I don't know. I mean, it's a palette knife, but sometimes it's fun just to go in and scratch into the, into the picture here. See what happens. If it doesn't work, you can just paint over it. <laughs> that seems to be a pretty good message overall. Try the yeah, things. That's... If they don't work, paint over it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it. that's kind of the spirit that I'm trying to inhabit the most is uh, kind of hakuna matata, you know? Like, just <laughs> see what happens. Uh, it means no worries. It means no worries, in case you were wondering. For the rest of your days. Yeah. And may they be many. But um, I think I think I've um, reached a point in my career that I've, I've exhausted <laughs> I'm exhausted so I am um, trying to get back to having fun and playing and um, uh, enjoying myself because that's really at the that's really where we all started as kids we were playing you know we didn't care if it looked good or not we didn't care if it you know if it turned out the way that we had planned. I mean, sometimes... Sometimes, sometimes you care do. as a kid. Sometimes, sometimes you care a, a kid, lot. For sure. But, I mean, it didn't stop you. And I yeah. think that's the thing, is that it did, it, at a certain point, it does stop you. As adults, mm. you, stop, you stop playing and you take yourself too seriously. You take the whole sort of... The whole performance, not performance, but the whole act of, of drawing and painting or coloring or whatever Playing music. Do, it becomes too loaded. I find that it's a lesson that you have to learn over and over and over and over and over. Like we tell yeah, ourselves these day. things, but we're still like, oh no, I'm taking this way too seriously. And I have to relax about it That's and right. just play. Every day we do this. I have to remind myself because I'll sit down and say, now how did I do this? Again?
little birdie. Well, I kept on hearing ducks. <laughs> What kind of bird is that? Is that a duck? It's, that is exactly it. <laughs> Northern um, bobblehead, bobbleheaded group. Is it a mallard? It's got to be a pine tree, right? Some sort of conifer. <laughs> very good point actually like how do you know when to stop and do you often 
stop too early? Do you find you stop too early or stop too late? I um, have a habit of um, taking things a little bit too far. But the um, th something that I've tried lately, if I'm, if I'm really unsure about myself, is that I will paint something and at the moment that it feels good, mm -hmm. I'll scan it. Okay, and then you can keep that version, whatever happens. Yeah. So there are only a few times, but I've used in some of the books that final art doesn't exist anymore. Mm. It's not, um, it doesn't feel good because there's, you know, you've, you've sort of destroyed it, but... <laughs> But that's okay. Um, and it's because you of, of bad, um, poor uh, um, judgment, mm -hmm. I guess. Not, not being aware or being, being able to control yourself necessarily. That's the other thing is, I mean, when things are going really well, you don't want to stop. You feel really good. I mean, that's at the, at the heart of why you are making, why I make things is usually for that moment, mm -hmm. moment of, um, feeling connected to the medium and connected to the image or, and it's sort of out of your hands and it, it, you just sort of watch things build up and progress on their own and well I think it's a beautiful piece that we ended up with me. here I don't mm -hmm. think I don't think you've gone too far with this uh, with this guy yeah that guy's gonna yeah show the oh, world it's beautiful. Nice little misty walk. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Misty walk? <laughs> I Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Um, the trees in the background, I mean, like, it's a funny It's a funny thing that with the ink that you sort of just drop in there and see what happens. Sometimes it looks more like a tree and sometimes it looks like a swarm of mosquitoes. But <laughs> uh, I mean, I wonder when the, when the gum arabica dries, if that, uh, if that shifts the look as well. We're getting some questions now as well. Yeah. Sydney says sure. he tries to do a little play painting every day. What does he do with them? Like, what does what does he do with the paintings afterwards? Do you mean Anna, or I, th I assume that's what she means? Uh, just stacks of these all over my I'm just gonna, studio. Sh you, do you want to like uh, just demonstrate Here's that an pile ankle. again? And there's an ankle. Yeah, there's a painting of an ankle. <laughs> Um, here's a painting of a... Oh, that's nice. A teapot. Can you bring that one right up close to the camera? I love that. It's magic. Yeah, that one's nice. I was going to use it for something. This is a, a hallway mm -hmm. at the farm where I was, uh, that I had mentioned, where we were living for a little while. Um, but yeah, a lot of these just sort of end up... See, some of them are kind of just a mess. Mm. Playing around with different mediums to see what would happen. And sometimes it's an interesting um, oh, wow. effect. And sometimes uh, it looks, here's some fireworks. In there. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't even really look like, like much. Amazing. So, so I guess like if you if you hit on something, then maybe you develop that idea, or maybe you, I guess, with the, the possibility of scanning things, you have a lot of, you can uh, you can then kind of, because I, 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 I don't know, I, I think about it as something like kind of demoing, when I'm just kind of like scratching around and making ideas and whatever, um, and if I try and do that every day, that's usually when something comes. Usually, something comes out of that process. Um, yeah, I think with writing, um, making art making music i think that's the most important part of the practice mm -hmm. is allowing yourself to um a, a lot of it is is sort of getting things getting things out of your system as well mm. uh, but also mm. establishing um uh, these connections between your brain and the your hands if you're using your hands or or just recognizing the the voice that you have inherent the inherent voice that you have um, 
that you can sometimes forget, even overnight. You know, you go to bed, you wake up. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't remember what I sound like. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think I could ever write a song ever again. Yeah. Like that, that sort of thing. That happens to me every day. Yeah. Every day. And, Which I think is important uh, to hear then, for, for, for people who, yeah, have their own creative outlets to understand that people who are, you know, you've had a tremendous amount of success with the work that you do, but to know that you kind of struggle with that as well, I think is maybe useful for for people and in, in, like in, anyone in ever, any kind of artistic endeavor to know that that's always a battle. It's always a battle, but it's, um, yeah, it is always a battle. It's an, It doesn't really get easy, but I don't think it, it, it should be easy. I mean, it's a battle, but that when you win it, it feels so much, so powerful. Mm. And you feel, you, you feel powerful when you have this, when you break through. And it's the battle that you win through play, is what you're... Yeah. But yeah, putting those two things together. Right. Uh, the ink mm, in mm -hmm. Arabic, it just kind of flows and blooms in ways that uh, you couldn't do on your own. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is just sit back and watch. And, and I enjoy that quite a bit. Because then you get to take credit for it. <laughs> There's more of that. I've done lots of those little kind of experiments where see what happens mm -hmm. with little horses. I grew up with horses. Did you know that? I did not. Like these yeah, guys? I had, a, I had a pony named Duke. Oh, there's... That can be Duke, that's too. That's not a pony. <laughs> that's not a pony. Get, that out of my f get it out of my face. <laughs> Well, Sydney, this has been like magical, and I'm so glad that we were able to do this. We've thought about this and talked about this for a while now, so it's been uh, it's been fantastic that we've made it happen. And you know, we can do it again sometime as well. I'd love to. I was thinking while while we were just um, spacing out there for a bit, uh, it would be such a great thing uh, just to have something like this, where you know, people to encourage people just to play around. Uh, no expectations. Who knows what it's, the picture is going to be about? Don't no mm -hmm. planning, nothing, or or the, or what the music sounds like, and just kind of have a a period of time where people can just, um, you know, I don't know, take part. I'm I'm just free jazzing. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's scheme on that. I like yeah, the sound okay. of it. Yes. Well, that said, I think it's time. Uh, it's time to say goodbye to Sydney. I'm going to keep going here and play a few more songs, but uh, Sid, thanks so much for joining. People can find your stuff, sydneydraws.ca. There's a link in the video description if they want to find it. Um, get in lots of yes pleases to that idea and thanks, thankses, thank yous. Um, it's been a pleasure. And yeah, I hope to see you in, in Halifax before too very long. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I uh, um, gotta say, I love your love your show. Thank you. Yeah, Sydney sometimes watches, so people people who've seen this and appreciate it now you can uh, you can chat with Sydney in the future. Sometimes yeah. request some uh, Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say goodbye. Okay. Bye, thank you Sydney. So much, Jim. That was Sydney Smith, everyone. What an amazing fella! What an incredible artist. Um, yeah, we, we ended up taking quite a while with that. So I'm just going to finish it with two, two last ones here. Um, I had a request from Abby in New Brunswick, not New Brunswick, New Jersey, a different new place, um, for Harvest Moon because I played that.
It was my brother's birthday yesterday, so I want to play him a little, uh, a little song. He always requests this one. It's about getting so fed up with the futility of words that you decide to stop speaking. It's a parable, not, not from experience. It's called Watch Me Go. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. This is going to be the last one. Next week we have. The one and only Tanya Davis, poet, singer, songwriter, extraordinaire, video, poem maker, um, joining us from Prince Edward Island. In the video description on uh, YouTube and Facebook, there is a list of the upcoming guests. We're going to be going on until October 20th, and then I'm going on tour. The tour dates will be in the credits at the end of the show. But this is Watch Me Go. Watch Me Go for Joe. Sick of pages that lead and mislead him. He gave up on words altogether today. Plastic for fire, burn petty, toxic. A throat sticking sweetness that counters the flames. Spread the salt out, don't leave the dogs out. The snow come down, rain fall, turn to ice Spread the salt out, eat shoulder down cow. He 
called out for order, for silence, for solace. Responses are muted or turned on its head. Over mechanical violence and solace. At least you got something away from the thread. You reach out to pull it. Taking his lashing out With no words to couch it Who won't stand aside So pull it off, pull it off Away from unworthy hands It's loosening, it's loosening Enough to slip your fingers in It's thickening, it's thickening It grows to fill up the empty space and Could you all, would you all Be just about as sound as you are finish it with um we'll be back next week if this is new to you we're here every wednesday at the same time 3 p.m eastern standard time uh 4 p.m on the atlantic the atlantic coast aside from newfoundland because it'd be um 4 30 in newfoundland eight o'clock in the uk nine o'clock central europe um it's always such a pleasure to be here thank you so much for tuning in every week this has been going for a year and a half now and long may it continue as far as i'm concerned Subscribe if you haven't already, like the Facebook page, follow the Twitch thing wherever you're watching. Um, thank you for all the kind words. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll see you We'll see you next week. Check out the tour dates as well, because tickets are selling out. Hebden Bridge just sold out. Um, London's very close. Get your tickets while you can. Okay, bye-bye.